Namini Namaste Sarasati Deve Guruvani Pucharine Nedvi Sesa Sanyavadi Paskatya Desatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Kidadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Mahal Bhagavad Gita Grantaraja Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai So today we're continuing to hear about the difference between the Amish community and the Goloka Vrindavan community. Very interesting subject. So I got homework from Sunidhyanand, Srita Nala, and Shimani Anand, and from Augustya Prabhu. Okay, so let's start with Augustya. Let's see what Augustya has to say. So he says, read about Govardhan Puja and extract the characteristics of the devotees and compare that to the modern mundane communities in the mode of material happiness. And reference uh, Krishna book and Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. Very good. Okay, so Augustya Prabhu writes, to compare these two, let's say, types of communities whose existence was separated by a span of 5,000 years, we must delve into the facts of what both parties did and why they did it. First, let's look at what happened during the Govardhan Puja described in the 10th Canto which took place in Vrindavan 5,000 years ago. The first point we should notice in the reason Maharaj Nanda made sacrifice to Indra every year. Quote, on hearing the inquiry from Krishna, Maharaj Nanda replied, my dear boy, this ceremonial performance, meaning the, the worshiping Lord Indra, is more or less traditional because rainfall is due to the mercy of, the, of King Indra and the clouds are his representatives and because water is so important for our living, we must show some gratitude to the controller of this rainfall, Maharaj Indra. So Augusta now continues. Nanda Maharaj did not perform the sacrifice for any material gain, nor for fame but out of gratitude to Indra. Another thing we can see is that Krishna stresses the importance of the caste system. Unlike people like the Amish, who solely care for their community, Krishna suggests that the communities of the Brahmanas, Chachas, Vaisas, Sudras, Chandalas, etc. should work together to create a harmonious environment. Even animals like dogs and goats should be part of that cooperation. Krishna says that all animate and even inert objects have their part to play. Those are the two main differences between the devotees and the modern mundane communities. One, most modern communities do sacrifices and such for material gain or for gaining fame. For example, someone may execute a sacrifice to make their business grow, etc. Instead, devotees serve and perform sacrifices because of the transcendental love and gratitude. Because of transcendental love and gratitude, uh, and you forgot to say for Krishna, but it's understood. Two, the devotees cooperate with every community 
and type of living entity or even objects to make a harmonious environment. While these days modern communities and people only care about their personal gain or gain as a community, but ignore the suffering or joy outside their own comfort zone. Okay. So Augustia's point is here that a people in Vrindavan, their only thought is to please Krishna. So that that is the uh, same, let's say, focal point of their interest. Everybody has the same interest. That is to please Krishna. So therefore, there's cooperation because they all have the same goal. Whereas, uh, and when we say everybody, everybody includes everybody in everything. The trees, the cows, the uh, farmers, and the neighbors, everybody has the same goal as to please Krishna. So therefore, there are concentric circles of interest. There's no inter, uh, inter let's say, there's no uh, intersecting circles where there would be uh, like two different focal points of interest and the circle around each would intersect and there in that in intersected area that means there's two different groups with different purposes want the same thing and that's formula for fighting and and uh, even killing an example of that is like for example you have the palestinians and israelis or you have the pakistanis and and the indians so they both want the same uh, piece of land for their own purpose. So that causes strife and fighting and war. <clears throat> but if everybody has the same goal, that is to please Krishna, then they all cooperate because they have the same purpose. So today, uh, we see that the Amish, they have a purpose that's mainly for their own community and, and, and even their own community is divided into several parts the Mennonites and the Amish and therefore um, when there are different points of of interest there's going to be some uh, intersection of uh, of their of their circle of interest and and then there'll be eventually arguments and fighting because two groups want the same thing, but for different reasons. So Augustus's point was that uh, there are the, there are two main differences between the devotees and the modern mundane communities. One most the first point is most modern communities do work or sacrifices for material gain. And he says that devotees in Vrindavan perform sacrifices because of their transcendental love and gratitude for Krishna and not for material gain. And then he says, <clears throat> He says, the second point is that the devotees cooperated with everyone in all different types of uh, living entities and even uh, objects to make a harmonious environment. But in modern communities, people only think about or care about their own personal gain or gain as a community, but ignore the suffering and joy outside their own comfort zone. Okay, good. Next, we have, 
homework by Shivani, Shivani Anand. And she says, one day in Vrindavan, all the citizens were preparing for a yagya sacrifice. Krishna inquired from his father, Nanda Maharaj, the head of Vrindavan, what the purpose of this yagna is. And Nanda Maharaj told Krishna that the yagna was to thank Lord Indra for providing rain for the plants and for agricultural production. Krishna told his father that there was no need to worship the Lord Indra since he was just doing his duty, providing rain. He then went on to say that instead of performing a yagya for Indra, there should be a puja for Govardhan Hill, since that is, is, the one, uh, that is one of the main sources of life. For, uh, in other words, they take their cows every day uh, to, to, gra to eat grass on, on the Govardhan and so forth. So Govardhan Hill provides food for the cows, and the cows give milk which the citizens used to make tasty milk products. After some convincing, Nanda Maharaj agreed to celebrate the Govardhan Puja. Krishna told the cowherd men to prepare for the puja, and they did as they were told. There is a big difference between the devotees in Vrindavan and the modern communities today. In Vrindavan, for example, once Krishna told the cowherd men to stop the yagya, uh, directed toward Indra, the simple cowherd men listened to Krishna without a doubt because they had complete faith in Krishna <coughs> and Nanda Maharaj. The people of Vrindavan executed the Govardhan Puja just like Krishna told them to. They, didn't ha they did not have a single hesitation at all because they know or they knew for a fact that Krishna knows better and that he would always protect them if something went wrong. In a modern community, things would go, things happen in a different way. For example, in a community, everyone may eat cereal every day for breakfast without fail, and an authority may tell them to stop eating cereal since it's unhealthy and that they should eat fruits instead. The whole community today may have mixed opinions about this advice. Some people may listen and some people won't listen. This is because they either don't have faith in the authority or the fact that the members in the community don't believe that fruits are healthier than cereal. A real example is COVID-19. Many authorities around the world tell people to wear masks when they leave their homes. This is for their safety and the safety of others. Even after millions of deaths due to coronavirus, by the way, that's incorrect. There are not millions of deaths due to coronavirus. At the most, there's uh, less than half a million deaths so far. Even after millions of deaths due to coronavirus, some people still don't wear masks when they leave their homes. This is because they don't believe that they can get the virus. People also don't wear masks because they're simply adamant. These types of people say that the authorities don't get to tell them, should not tell them what to do. Little, uh, so these people, may know that they're risking their own life but not by not wearing a mask in public. This is the difference between the devotees of Krishna and the people today. The right thing to do is always think, will Krishna be happy with my action before we do anything? If the answer is yes, then we can do it. If the answer is no, then we should not do such a thing. So basically what she's saying is that in the Vrindavan community, people listen to Krishna. And in modern communities today, 
uh, people are more prone to just make up their own minds regardless of uh, the uh, advice of authorities. Okay. Uh, there's a reason why people listen to Krishna or the, the inhabitants of Vrindavan listen to Krishna because they love Krishna and because they have faith that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and whatever emanates from his lips is perfect. Just like we chant every morning, Guru Mukha Padma Vaikya Chitete Kariya Aikya. My only wish is to have my consciousness purified by the words emanating from my spiritual master's lotus mouth. Attachment to his lotus feet is perfection fulfills uh, all knowledge. Uh, he opens my darkened eyes and fills my heart with transcendental knowledge. So, therefore, uh, one accepts the spiritual master who is a pure representative of Krishna and takes the advice of the spiritual master. So once you observe a spiritual master and you're convinced that such a person is a genuine representative of Krishna and you accept that person as a spiritual master and, and either Shiksha or Diksha gurus, then you're obliged to follow their advice. You have a long time to determine whether they are bona fide or not. But after determining that, you promise to follow their advice. Now, what is their advice? They don't say jump off a bridge. They don't say uh, drink poison or anything like that. They say four things you should not do and four things you should do every day. And the devotee promises to do them. No meat, fish, eggs, no gambling, no uh, philosophical speculation, no intoxication, and no meat eating. I mean, no uh, illicit uh, activities outside of marriage. And then every day I chant minimum 16 good rounds of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Japa. Hear regularly the class, classes on Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And uh, eat only prasadam, food offered to Krishna with love and devotion. And regularly come to the temple and perform devotional service in the association of devotees. So these are promises that one makes at the moment of initiation. And that's after having observed spiritual master from whom one is uh, hoping to get initiation and becoming convinced that they are a bona fide representative of Krishna and that, that everything they say is originally emanating from Krishna himself and they're simply repeating correctly. Okay. However, today, people always like to have their own way, and they always say, my way or the highway. In other words, if you don't like what I want to do, then you can just go away, and, and I'll, I'm going to do what I want to do. So that uh, attitude of, um, let's say, Non-cooperation has become a, a hallmark of uh, Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, uh, there's so many speculative ideas. Everybody always argues, gets into fights, and so forth. Okay, that's uh, Shivani's point, uh, homework. And then we also have Sritan. And Sritan Prabhu writes... Uh, first of all, he notes down some words that we uh, uh, ask to learn. That's, one is proselytize, and then there's the phrase prosperity theology, and then the word juxt just opposed. Just opposed. So, uh, proselytize means an attempt to convert a person from one belief to another. Prosperity theology means personal empowerment by the belief that God has gifted everyone with, with money or power to help increase their faith. Well, basically, prosperity f theology means that you believe that God wants you to be rich and 
there's certain things you can do to become rich and mainly to cull, C-U-L-L. You can look that word up, cull, C-U-L-L. Cull the mercy of God by giving donations to the church and following the advice of the pastor or the minister and so forth. Okay, and then the third word, just oppose, means to place a, a thing side by side to another thing uh, to make a comparison okay, of those two things. Okay, so now Shitan writes, the Govardhan Puja was a uh, sacrifice performed by the inhabitants of Vrindavana to please Govardhan or Krishna. Due to Krishna's instructions, all the people started doing wonderful things such as charity to brahmanas with cow, by giving cows, preparing food uh, by giving cows as gifts, preparing food for the yagya or the sacrifice, chanting the glories of Krishna. If we look at these actions in a generic way, mm, generic, G-E-N-E-R-I-C, what does he mean by that? We can see that the actions are giving charity donations, offering uh, and eating prasadam, chanting the holy name. All these are necessary to progress on the path of bhakti or devotion. These are all mentioned in chapter 24 of the Krishna book. All these activities are carried out by Maharaj Nanda and the inhabitants. These are some of the qualities of a pure devotee. In the Bhagavad Gita 13, point 8 to 12, Krishna states that all uh, states what is knowledge. He says, all these I declare to be knowledge, and besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. So, in other words, there's uh, 18 points of knowledge. He says, this is what knowledge is. And anything besides this is ignorance. To be a devotee, you must have this knowledge. If we compare a devotee who furthers the Sankirtan movement and an Amish resident, we can see the differences in the activities of their motives and their motives. The Amish live with only the Amish folk and do not strive to preach their religion to others. Therefore, shutting themselves out from the modern civilization. A devotee, being compassionate, tries to help other people so that they can go back to Krishna. The goal of a devotee is to serve and give the opportunity to serve Krishna to everyone he can. The Amish separate themselves from the modern world so that they can continue their religion in peace without distractions. That was the original reason of the Mennonites coming to the new world. We can eliminate preaching from the Amish's quality list. If we look at the food they eat, we can see that they eat a lot of meat and eat onion and garlic, most likely. Even if they weren't, uh, even if they were not non-vegetarian, even if they were meat eaters, even if they are meat eaters, they do not offer their food, which means their food isn't sanctified. Well, I'm not sure about that statement, but maybe. And therefore, if their food is not offered, they're eating only sin. That already isn't in a mode of goodness. Those are actions in a mode of passion or ignorance. We can, we can now look at chanting of the holy name names of God. The Amish don't have anything like that, but are known to strictly practice their religion. They are only baptized after committing to initiation into their ranks, uh, of their own people, that is. The Amish, however, do not fall, uh, the Amish, however, are not in the transcendental mode of goodness. Yeah, they might be somewhat in the mode of goodness, mundane goodness, but not transcendental mode. Due to missed, 
due to uh, lacking in important qualities as a devotee. This is due to their lack of communication of their religion. Unlike a devotee who performs the Sankirtan movement, although the Amish live a disciplined lifestyle, they are unlike the devotees who are the epitome of goodness and they are the well-wishers of everyone. Well, in other words, devotees are preachers and the Amish reserve their preaching to their own people, their own community, <coughs> which is based on a material bodily concept. So they're not involved in uh, transcendental life, although they are trying to stay in the mode of goodness, but it's a mode of goodness mixed with passion and ignorance. It's not the pure mode of goodness. Okay, good. Shritan. And let's see, we also have homework from Sunidhi Anand. Ah, okay. And Sunidhi made a comparative uh, chart from the Krishna book. And she says, the characteristics of the devotees in Vedic times and modern mundane community. Okay, so first point, devotees. Different kinds of delicious preparations were made to please Govardhan Hill by all classes of men. And then non-devotees. Only the devotees offer prayers and obeisances today. For the atheist, Govardhana is just a mountain. So, yeah, the devotees are worshiping the mountain as non-different than Krishna. But atheists, Today, don't accept such a thing. Okay. Two, Krishna instructed the cowherd men to invite and honor the brahmanas and give them charity. Well, modern mundane community, brahmanas are not honored in the society today. Brahmanas also have to work to earn their li food today or living. Number three, cows were decorated and fed well. Well, in, in the in opposition to that, in modern communities, cows are exploited for milk, veal, and meat. Then, Vrindavan uh, devotees, the lower class of men were also respected and fed sumptuous prasadam in the Govardhan Puja. Uh, but on the other hand, modern communities, people look down upon people born in lower castes. Okay. Then, characteristics of devotees in Vedic times, Everyone did their prescribed duties well and were known for doing the same. Well, yeah, they're divided into Brahmanas, Chachas, Vaishas, Sudras, Brahmachari, Grihasta, Manaprasana, Sanyas. And modern society, most of the people are Sudras because they work, well, you should say Sudras or less, because they work for someone else. And people are known for the money they have got and not according to their prescribed duties. Okay? And then devotees, everyone works in cooperation of the whole society, which includes not only animate objects, but also inanimate objects like hills and land. And modern community, today people exploit each other to gain fame, money, and power. And then now devotees, the Vaisha community is specifically responsible for the economic improvement of the society by producing grain by giving protection to the cows, by transporting food when needed, and by banking and finance. But modern society, today the Vaishnava community thrives by exploiting others. They make people work more for less money. They hoard and sell grains to profit, for profit, which leaves a certain section of society hungry. After the cow stops giving milk, she is killed for meat. Okay, very good. And then now, next point. Cow protection was considered more important than protection of cats and dogs. And modern days, protection of cats and dogs are considered more important than cows, cow protection. And then the lower class of men were respected and given necessary protection. That's in the Vedic society. And today, the lower class of men are ignored and exploited. And lastly, everyone is taken care of because all were in Krishna consciousness 
and today people look at the, at only their benefit and take advantage of others for their personal benefit. Okay, very good, Sunidi. Very, very good homework. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read from the Krishna book. And this is, what chapter is this? This is chapter 24. Maharaj Nanda finally relented. In other words, Krishna kept discussing with his father. His father was reluctant to do Govardhan Puja because it had never been done before. There's no descriptions of it in the Vedas. But finally, Krishna convinced his father to do it. Reluctantly, the father goes and says, okay. That's why he says, Nanda Maharaj finally relented. The coward man then inquired from Krishna how he wanted the yagya performed because it had never been done before, you know, worshiping a mountain. And Krishna gave them the following directions. Prepare very nice foods of all descriptions from the grain and ghee collected for the yagya. Prepare rice, dal, then halava, pakora, puri, and all kinds of milk preparations, such as sweet rice, rabri, sweet balls, sandesha, rasgula, and ladu and invite the learned brahmanas who can chant the Vedic hymns and offer oblations to the fire. The brahmanas should be given all kinds of grain in charity, then decorate all the cows and feed them well. After performing this, give money in charity to the brahmanas. As far as the lower animals are concerned, such as the dogs and the lower grades of people, such as the chandalas, a fifth class of men who are considered untouchable, they also may be given sumptuous prasada. After nice grasses have been given to the cows, the sacrifice known as Govardhan Puja may immediately begin. This sacrifice will be very much satisfying to me, Krishna says. Okay, so this is Vedic culture. Protection of cows and land stewardship, production of of grains from the land, grains and vegetables, and giving charity to brahmanas, who in turn give charity to the other classes, for those who need it. And everyone, including lower animals and lower class people, everyone gets sumptuous prasadam, and they also get charity. Okay, so in this statement, Lord Krishna practically described the whole economy of the Vaishya community. In all communities in human society, including the Brahmanas, Chachas, Vaishyas, Sudras, Chandalas, etc., and in the animal kingdom, including the cows, dogs, goats, etc., everyone has his part to play. Each is to work in cooperation for the total benefit of all society which enables not only animate objects but also inanimate objects like hills and land. The Vaishya community is specifically responsible for the economic improvement of the society by producing grains, by giving protection to the cows, by transporting food when needed, and by banking and finance. So these, these are the duties of the uh, Vaishyas. From this statement, we learn also that although the cats and dogs, which have now become so important, are not to be neglected, cow protection is actually more important than protection of cats and dogs. Another hint we get from this statement is that the chandalas, or the untouchables, are also not to be neglected by the higher classes and should be given necessary protection. Everyone is important. But... <clears throat> some are directly responsible for the advancement of human society, and some are only indirectly responsible. However, when Krishna consciousness is there, then everyone's total benefit is taken care of. So that's the main point. When Krishna consciousness is there, everyone's total benefit is taken care of. The sacrifice known as Gurunath Puja is observed in the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Lord Chaitanya has recommended that since Krishna is worshipable, so his land, 
Vrindavan and Govardhan Hill is also worshipable. To confirm this statement, Lord Krishna said that Govardhan Puja is as good as worship of him. From that day, Govardhan Puja has been going on and is known as Anakuta. Anakuta means large, large, like a mountain of uh, delicious food. <clears throat> In all the temples of Vrindavan or outside of Vrindavan, huge quantities of food are prepared in this ceremony and are very sumptuously distributed to the general populace, population. Sometimes the food is thrown to the crowds and they enjoy collecting it off the ground. From this we understand that prasadam offered to Krishna never becomes poll polluted or contaminated even if it is thrown on the ground. The people therefore collect and eat it with great satisfaction. The Supreme Personality Godhead Krishna thus advised the cowherd men to stop the Indra Yajna and begin the Govardhan Puja in order to chastise Indra, Indra who was very much puffed up at being the supreme controller of the heavenly planets. Okay. So that's the Vrindavan community where everyone and everything is taken into consideration and treated nicely and respectfully. That's the point. When we see that Krishna is the father of all living entities, Ahambija Pradapita, the seed giving father of all living entities, then no, no living entity is ignored. Everyone is given a chance to be protected and to live properly. One example of that is how to relate, uh, for example, a devotee asked Prabhupada, how do we preach to an ant? And Prabhupada said, if you see an ant, you push one grain of, of sugar uh, in the pathway of the ant, and when it comes to the sugar and starts moving it to wherever it wants to take it, you say, Hare Krishna, loudly, so the ant can heal, hear. So this is the way you preach to ants and relate to them. Very interesting, Prabhupada. You see, this is spiritual vision. Okay. So, uh, the Vrindavan community as compared to modern communities, there are major differences. And uh, anyway, I want to thank the four people who did the homework. And today's subject is called Yukta Vairagya. Y-U-K-T-A V-A-I-R a G Y A, Yukta Vairagya. So this is your homework for next week. Look up Yukta Vairagya and find out what it means. And some hints to do that is number one, look up Bhagavad Gita sixth chapter tenth verse, Bhagavad Gita ninth chapter twenty eighth verse. And Bhagavad Gita, 11th chapter, 55th verse. So, 6.10 and uh, also 8.27, 11.55. Yeah, that's it. 6.10, 11, oh, 9.28. 11.55 and 8.27. 6.10, That's your homework. Read those purports and you'll see in those purports several verses by Rupa Goswami from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and uh, you have to explain what these verses mean. Anasakta shevishayan yatarham upayun jitaha nirbande krishna sambande yukta vairagyam uchyate. So the second thing you have to explain is what is yukta vairagya, right? Uh, 
Yes, Yukta Vairagya. And then, uh, yeah, Prapachikitaya Buddha Harisambandu Vastuna. Mumukshurbihi Paritiago Vairagyam Fagu Katyate. So the other thing is, uh, what is Falgu Vairagya? So Yukta Vairagya and Falgu Ragya, Raya, uh, Vairagya. This is your homework. And by reading these four verses and purports, try to explain it. This is a very important principle because this principle of Yukta Vairagya as opposed to Falgu Vairagya is the difference between Krishna consciousness and Mayavad philosophy. So you, that's another point that you have to explain. What is that difference? And also, the by explain how by yukta vairagya you become free from the laws of karma, and you're free to be engaged full time in Krishna consciousness, and. And thus you become happy, peaceful, and increase and, and, and engaged in the ultimate welfare work of spreading Krishna consciousness to all living entities. Unless you come to the stage of yukta vairagya, you can't do these things. You can't really engage in Krishna consciousness. You're too involved with personal possessiveness, acquiring many, many different objects for your own sense gratification. Whereas if you become yukta vairagya, you use everything in the service of Krishna without that selfishness and possessiveness. This is what creates harmony and social, let's say, well-being of everyone in the society. And the opposite, a strong sense of personal possessiveness and desire to be the enjoyer and dominator, it only creates strife and, and entanglement in the laws of material nature. So this concept of Yukta Vairagya is very important as explained by Krishna himself in those four verses and in the purports, uh, the verse, several very important verses by Rupa Goswami are quoted and basically, they're saying this, Rupa Goswami is saying the same thing as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, but you know, with, it sounds a little bit different, but it's exactly the same meaning. So that's your homework for next week. If you have any questions, you can ask them now. If not, then we will adjourn. So I'll wait a few minutes to see if there are any questions. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. How do you spell that? Yukta, Y U K T A, and Vairagya, V I A R A G Y A. So, Yukta, Y U K T A, and Vairagya, V A I R A G Y A. Yukta Vairagya. And I also mentioned Falgu. Vairagya, P H A L G U, P H A L G U, and then Vairagya, V A I R A G Y A. Falgu Vairagya means false renunciation, and Yukta Vairagya means renunciation through contact or through uh, contact with Krishna or through relationship to Krishna. Any other questions? Okay. Haribo. Thank you.